It's a push for literacy that's one for the books. Duval County Public Schools is ramping up its reading efforts with the launch of several new and exciting programs, all guaranteed to create a new class of all-star readers. Check out this video at Spring Park Elementary School. Students celebrated their love of reading with the character parade. It was just one of many celebrations that took place during the district superintendent's All-Stars Literacy Week. Every day, schools participated in fun activities geared at getting students excited about reading. The week also marked the official launch of two new programs, DJ's Book Club and the Superintendent's 25 Book 1 Million Word Challenge. As if a new book club and a new challenge weren't enough, add to that list a new partnership, one that's giving more than 60,000 students access to free books and resources. Real School reporter Alex Sobel joins us now and is going cover to cover with all of the details. Alex? Hey Joel, check out this library card because now you see it and now you don't. Starting this school year, every single elementary student will have their very own virtual library card on file with the Jacksonville Public Library. And you know what that means? Endless possibilities. Student library cards, DJ's book club, and the superintendent's all-stars. If you were ever in need of creative ways to get students reading, well, Duval County Public Schools has you covered. Want to know more? Let's start with DJ's book club. She didn't mind. DJ isn't just our favorite furry and funny mascot. He's an avid reader who wants you to read with him. Anyone can join his club. By heading to the district website, you'll find recommended books for readers of all ages. You can also print out a bookmark to help you stay on track with your goals for the school year. Now, let's talk about the superintendent's 25 book, 1 million word challenge. Duval students and teachers, I want you to take the challenge. Join me in taking literacy in our schools to a whole new level. It's a year-long effort that offers fun goals and incentives at the school and district level. Students we spoke to say they're excited about the program. I think incentives will motivate them to do more learning and educational things. Sometimes we can see education as a boring thing, but if you have incentives, it just pushes you to do better in school and motivates you to be a better person in school. Here's how it works. Students must read books outside of school time. You can head to our website to find out how many books you should be reading for your grade level. As you complete the requirements, you'll not only be eligible for prizes and recognition, you'll also be recognized in an end-of-year literacy extravaganza. Woo! <laughs> that already sounds like a blast. Slowly the pig ambled into the library. Last but not least, let's fill you in on the brand new student cards program. This is a new partnership between the Jacksonville Public Library and Duval County Public Schools. For the first time, every single elementary student in the district gets a library card. But it won't be a card they hold in their hands. It'll be a virtual card accessible by their student ID numbers. Elementary students can go to any of the city's 21 public libraries and check out three books at a time. But guess what? Students can check out more than just books. And with that card, they can check out books and audio books. They can access our computers and all of our online resources. So many of our children grow up without access to vocabulary, to books, to knowledge, to information. A downtown library or a public library system is literally that passport to a new and different world. It broadens horizons, it expands opportunities, and it's really an equity measure to equalize opportunities for all children. I think we're going to see a lot more book homes this year, starting with me. And remember, you can always head to our website for more information. For Real School, I'm Alex Sobel. From the Capitol to our classrooms, a love of literacy is a message important to not only this district, but also to the First Lady of the State of Florida. <laughs> How many of you love to read? Talk about a special story time. You're looking at video of Governor Rick Scott's wife, Anne, visiting students at Reynolds Lane Elementary School. Florida's First Lady spent the morning visiting classrooms and reading to both kindergarten and third grade students. Here she's reading the book, The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. This is not the first time Scott has visited Duval schools to promote literacy. She says it's important to begin reading at a young age in order to develop vocabulary and language skills. This next group of students is all about setting trends, especially when it comes to helping their younger peers become better readers. We're talking about the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy's Teen Trendsetter Program. 
The foundation recently held a news conference at Terry Parker High School to announce a new learning management system they're launching in Duval County Public Schools. Leaders say this new system comes thanks to a partnership with AT&T and it will allow participants to receive training and access important information online. You could say the subject of our next story is a sight for sore eyes, at least for a couple of hundred Duval School students. That's because they've received the gift of free glasses. Real School anchor Desiree Miller is here to explain. Joel, we're talking about a foundation that sets its sights on helping students all over the world see more clearly. And thanks to a partnership with Duval County Public Schools, they're doing just that, one pair of glasses at a time. Can you see better? That's awesome. This is Tatiana Addison, and these are her new glasses. It was awesome. Like, I experienced new things that I haven't saw before. Between the machines, the tools, and the many pairs of glasses, it may look like Tatiana's inside of a regular eye doctor's office. But take a closer look. This is the Essler Vision Foundation's mobile clinic. It's parked outside of Andrew Robinson Elementary School, and dozens of students like Tatiana are getting fitted for new specs. Andrew Robinson was just one stop on a district-wide tour that helped provide free glasses to over 200 Duval County students. We know that once you put glasses on children, attendance goes up, reading scores go up, as well as math and science scores go up. Steven Schaller is president of the Essler Vision Foundation. He says by bringing their clinic to Duval County, they're eliminating one of the biggest barriers between students and better vision, access. Because even though they fail screenings today, they don't always get to the local doctors for uh, awareness, affordability. So having the mobile vision clinic show up out front and do right on the spot, it really is one of the biggest barriers we have, which is access. The partnership between the foundation and the district is brand new this school year and is sponsored by Web.com and the PGA Tour. Being able to see helped me achieve more of my potential. You will see the tangible benefits of this program in Jacksonville. In this joint news conference at Andrew Robertson, leaders shared staggering statistics. One in four children have vision problems that need to be corrected. So those children in the classroom migrate to the back of the room because they, they really have trouble learning because they can't see, they can't read. And not, that only affects their lives, but the lives of the other 20, 25 students in the classroom. Schaller says the foundation works with school nurses to identify students who have failed their school vision exam. Once students get to the mobile clinic, they're checked out and measured for their glasses. Technicians are on the spot cutting lenses and fitting them to frames. It was nice to see how everything goes, how people make the glasses and stuff. It was nice. In most cases, students will leave the van with a new pair of glasses. Otherwise, they will be mailed out in a few weeks. For students like Tatiana, there's only one word to describe how she feels. Grateful. I did want to say thank you to the people who gave me these free guys because if it wasn't for them, I would probably would have been blind by now. This year, the foundation visited a total of six Duval County schools in four days. The students range in age from kindergartners to fifth and sixth graders. Talk about some incredible work. For Real School, I'm Desiree Miller. Our next story takes us to Holiday Hill Elementary School, where one group of students is making big waves on the small screen. Real School reporter Molly Kirkwood joins us with the story. Once these students hit the airwaves, you can count on two things, getting all the latest news and having a good time. Want to see for yourself? Just sit back and tune in. It's T-minus 30 minutes before showtime and these students are getting ready. The DVD controls like the sound of the weather intro and sports intro. They're checking audio, setting shots, getting into position, and oh yeah, getting ready to have some fun. I love working together with everyone. I also love being on camera. I think it's really fun for the whole school to see um, what we do here, our personality. This is the Holiday Hill Elementary School Media Center. And five days a week, you can always count on finding this group of students working hard and working together to put on the morning show. Looks like they're about to go live in three, two, one. Good morning, it's Friday, all right, yay! I like controlling the cameras and like all the cool editing um, you can do on it. And I also like um, going on the morning show and like doing announcements because I like feel like, like that everybody needs to know what's going on in the school. Parent volunteer Greg Kiefer runs the program. 
he says this show is totally student driven and totally hands on. Well, we have like a production pipeline, just like a real show, just like a, a, your a evening news. They, they go out, they film, they bring it back, they edit, they title, they chop things together so they get what's important on camera um, onto the screen. So the kids actually write all their own pieces. Good morning, dolphins. I hope you're having a great day. Through that experience, students have learned making TV isn't as easy as it looks. You have to do the video and the audio and everyone has to be like quiet and it's kind of complicated but once you get the hang of it then it's easier. Something else that's gotten easier for many of these students, opening up and showing their personality. Now that I'm done with that, dance break! <laughs> Boosh! Between the fake mustaches, the dancing and the plain old silliness, students are encouraged to let loose on and off camera. Kiefer says that's resulted in several once shy students completely coming out of their shell. They've learned to collaborate and work with others better and that's always a good trait to have. Um, and they're more confident. Because everyone wants to know what everyone's on the inside, not like I'm Zachary and these are the announcement, announcements for today. <laughs> students are also confident they'll be able to take the skills they're learning on the morning show far beyond elementary school. I think it's going to help me with all of my leadership skills and getting into um, student bodies and um, National Honor Society and things like that. But in the meantime, they're having fun being local celebrities. Most people know me because I'm on the morning show. And making great memories. In case you're wondering, all the students have to audition to be a part of the show. It's obvious they're all really talented. Who knows, maybe someone will be a part of this show as a host. For Real School, I'm Molly Kirkwood. Hogan Spring Glen Elementary students are breaking a sweat and getting the ball rolling on a healthy lifestyle. Check out that action. In just moments, we're hitting the field to learn more about the Healthy Heroes program. Find out which local athletes joined in on the fun. Plus, speaking of heroes, we're introducing you to new school software that's catching on with superhero strength. It's called Heroes K-12. Find out how it works. Don't change the channel. Real School will be right back. When I read, I shoot for the stars. As an astronaut, a boy special. When I read, I learn ways I can keep my dog healthy, just like a veteran. When I read, I'm a firefly. It feels great. You say today. When I read, my career is clear for takeoff. As a pilot, the sky's the limit. VPK students develop literacy skills needed to become better readers. For a complete list of the Duval County Public Schools that offer VPK, go to duvalschools.org or call us at 904-390-2877. Welcome back to Real School. This next group of Duval students is getting a real kick out of living a healthy lifestyle. Real School reporter Charlotte Rogers is here with more on how the Healthy Heroes program is scoring big by pairing students with local athletes. Joel, it's one thing for these students to get out and play with their peers, but it's another thing when they get to play with members of the Jacksonville Armada Football Club. Looks like a little star power served as big motivation for these students to develop new, healthy habits. Okay, class! Yeah! So it looks like it'll be fifth grade against fourth grade. And with that, Students at Hogan Spring Glen Elementary were ready to go. Gathering in a field just outside of their school, they waited to meet their special guests. Who here thinks they're fairly healthy? That's Julie Bergman with the Jacksonville Armada Football Club. She's here to lead students in a series of fun and physical activities. And to help her out, she brought these guys, Nerdic Rustic and Jamal Johnson two professional soccer players who I'd say know a thing or two about staying fit. We don't want them to not be active. Um, as everybody knows, being active is also being healthy. The visit is part of the Armada's Healthy Heroes program, sponsored by Subway. The goal is to curb childhood obesity by teaching kids to eat well and live well. Students know that includes eating your fruits and vegetables. I like strawberries. Oranges, I like cabbage, spinach, I like all types of greens. And 
of course, being willing to get up and work up a sweat. The Armada prepared a number of fun activities to get kids going. First, a competitive game of Simon Says. Both hands up in the air. <laughs> then, in no time, the soccer balls were out. Students got the ball rolling with some fast-paced kicking and passing. Have you ever played any kind of soccer before? No. So this was your first time? Yeah. What was it like for you to play soccer? It was fun. It was very interesting. What did you like the most about being out here today? Um, the one where we ran, like pass it and stuff. Before leaving, Rustic and Johnson sat down and gave autographs to each and every one of these students. Wow. I'm starting to get a little jealous. But these players hope students got more out of this visit than just fun and games. I love soccer! They want students to pick up some good, lifelong skills. Looks like it worked. Because when we stay healthy and be active, we can do the things we want. Hogan Spring Glen is just one of many schools the Jacksonville Armada Football Club visited this school year. And check this out. Through the program, more than 800 students received free tickets to their games. I'd say that's a pretty good deal all around. For Real School, I'm Charlotte Rogers. Back to you. I think it's safe to say Duval County Public Schools is all about heroes. But we don't mean the kind that have superpowers or fly around in capes. Real School anchor Madeline Bryant joins us with more on a new program that's quickly gaining popularity in our schools. This program is called Heroes K-12, and it's putting a high-tech twist on the way schools track student behavior. It's so easy. All it takes is a point and a click, or a touch and a swipe. Okay, so you may be wondering what ping pong, a popcorn machine, or a game of Scrabble has to do with this program. Let me explain. This is the VIP lounge at Wolfson High School, and all of these students earned the right to be here because of their good behavior. You see, Wolfson is one of 54 schools in the district using the HEROES K-12 program. It's an application that allows teachers and staff to track and analyze all student behavior, both good and bad. As students rack up points in the good behavior category, they're rewarded. And here at Wolfson, that means time in the VIP lounge and lots of other fun incentives. Teachers and staff say that HERO K-12 has already made a huge difference this school year. They've seen fewer fights, arrests and tardy since implementing this program. It just gives us the tools that we need to track those positive behaviors and make it easy for our teachers, make it seamless for our students to understand what we're doing. HERO's really been a big help for that. Teachers say they're seeing more positive student engagement and participation. Subsequently on all their assessments in the class, um, they've done better because they've participated more, they've practiced more, they're more engaged, they're more hands-on with the material through the HERO program. And often any teenager, any young child, when you, when you recognize children for negative behavior, sometimes it unfortunately reinforces negative behavior because there's a lot of attention um, that, that's gained through negative behavior. This is almost flipping the paradigm where now we're recognizing positive behavior and it motivates students to get excited about doing the right thing and incentivizing them for doing the right thing as well. Students aren't the only ones racking up points through HEROES K-12. Wolfson principal Terry Connor says teachers are also given incentives to use the program. Some of the special prizes they're earning include prime parking spots. Since the HERO program is web-based, both students and parents can see their points in real time. Looks like any student in Duval County can become a real hero. For Real School, I'm Madeline Bryant. You can think of them as the behind-the-scenes guys who help keep our schools running. We're talking about the district's operations division and you may be surprised to find out what else they do in our schools. Tune in as Real School anchor George Boston sits down for a special one-on-one -on -one interview you don't want to miss. Plus, it's curtain up at Duval County Public Schools. For the first time, students across the district can watch live opera performances from New York, right here in Jacksonville. We'll have the story in moments. Stay right here. Real School will be right back. In between my eighth and ninth grade school year my father passed. Um, I was the youngest of three boys. Um, my mom didn't really know how to handle the situation so she left and 
I was kind of left to fend for myself. I met Mr. Rogers in the middle of my eighth grade year. He attended some of my basketball games because he knew I was transitioning to Terry Parker High School. Like I said, he came into my life at a, at a critical time. He allowed me to, to, to make better choices. He always reminded me that everything was a choice and a decision, and I had to ultimately live with those choices and those decisions. Had it not been for him continuing to, 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 to coach me in that direction, you know, I don't know what decisions I would have made or what mistakes I would have made. You know, some people are leery about stepping forward and being a mentor because they may have made mistakes in their past. In my opinion, those are the perfect mentors. I just think right now, our young males, in Jacksonville particularly, they need guidance. Um, they need structure and they need someone that they know that they can count on. We can no longer stand by and say it's not our problem. We live in this community, this is our community. If we expect for anything to change in our community, then we have to um, actively involve ourselves in that process and I think the time is now. Have you ever wondered who's responsible for maintaining all 160 plus schools in the district? We've got the answer in our next segment. Real School anchor George Boston is here with details. Today I'm joined by Paul Soares, Assistant Superintendent of Operations. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you, George. Your team is responsible for a lot of behind the scenes work at our schools. How would you describe the overall role of the Operations Division? Well, if you think of all the things that are not curriculum, you know, uh, starting from how do you get to school, the school buses, uh, once you get there, is, is it clean? Are all the doors, windows, roof, everything's intact and working? Um, all the people that have to buy all that stuff to put it in place, all the people that have to maintain it, uh, all, the, all the pest control, uh, all the supplies, all that comes from our central warehouse with drivers. Uh, we have our own code enforcement to kind of manage, you know, to make sure everything's done according to building codes. We issue our own permits. We probably have, we have about 3,800 people and we run about $150 million a year in, in our budget. Wow, okay. So um, your department doesn't just work with schools, but um, also with property. Can you explain that? Uh, with prop, we also manage all of the property, the real property the district has. You know, we, the, the property that the school buildings are on, we own that. Plus we own additional buildings like this building, the, uh, the district's administrative building that we, uh, we manage for the district. Okay. And um, what about transportation? I understand you work closely with the bus companies. Yeah, transportation is, is a really big deal. We, we run about 850 routes or buses, plus there's about 90 backup buses. So that's just around 940, 950, or, or just under 1,000. You can imagine every day. Yeah. About 50,000 school children going back and forth. So it's a big operation, um, a lot of moving parts, uh, and really kind of vital to get school kids to school to and from every day. Wow, okay. So is there anything really unique your department does that you think may surprise some of our viewers? Well, I, I don't know that people are fully aware of like, all those things that I mentioned that actually occur. You know, it, take, it takes a lot to get through the school day. Uh, the food service operation, another big operation. Um, I, th I would encourage people to find out, for example, on December 16th, there's gonna be a food day which is going to uh, have about 40,000 square feet in the Prime Osborne Center. Wow. We're going to hopefully get five or 6,000 school-aged children brought in, and it's going to be a ring of 100 vendors, 120 vendors, all different food products, and you kind of taste it, smile, or thumbs down. The ones that all the kids like, we'll look at those and look to put them in the menu. That's how we up upgrade and update the menu, and we make sure everything there is safe and healthy for you. But it's surprising, you know, whole wheat, low-fat cheese pizza tastes like pizza. Wow. And so it's, it's pretty good. Sounds great. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. You can always learn more at DuvalSchools.org. For Real School, I'm George Boston. Joel, back to you. For our last story of the day, the arts take center stage. The opera has officially hit the big screen in Duval County Public Schools. And it was a cause worthy of celebration, as dozens gathered for this ceremony at Douglas Anderson School of the Arts. The school recently became one of three in the country that streams live HD performances of the Metropolitan Opera in New York. It's an opportunity that will allow nearly 3,000 Duval students from all over the district to come to the school and enjoy the opera all year long. These screenings come in large part to the generosity of philanthropist Lawrence DeBow. 
That's why this ceremony concluded with the special reveal, the official renaming of the school's theater to the Lawrence J. DeBow Theater. Some of us go to sporting events, some of us go to theater, some of us go to other museums, and some of us go to opera. It's just another venue, it's just another art form, something else for us to enjoy. We want the children to have that exposure. Five more performances remain this school year, including Othello and Madam Butterfly. That's it for this episode of Real School. We'll see you again next month when a new episode premieres Sunday, December 6th at 6 p.m. on The CW17. Till then, have a great day. In three, two, one. <laughs> three two. All the students have to audition to be a part of the show. They're, well, it's okay. Joel, it's one thing for these students to develop. <laughs> For George. For George. <laughs> George Johnson. For George School. For George School. Okay. One pair of glasses at a time. Mm -hmm. That smile was horrible. Uh, no, no, uh, Duval County Public Schools. Duval. Duval. Ball. Ball. Ball.